Welcome back everyone to tutorial number four in Microsoft Excel for beginners. Uh, we had no homework assignment from the last video so we're going to jump right into some new material. The first thing I want to talk about today is the autofill feature in Excel. Um, and that's, uh, that's, this is how you spell it, autofill. Um, if you notice in your selected cell, and again I'm in C2, uh, there's a black square in the bottom right hand corner of the cell. This is what we call the autofill handle. And uh, I want to I'm going to select two numbers here, 1 and 2. And watch what happens when I click on this square in the bottom right hand corner, hold the mouse button down and drag down. See the little pop up there? It's telling me that's what's going to be displayed in that cell. So when I drag down to row 15 and release Excel automatically fills in the other numbers. What it does is it recognizes the pattern and it completes it for me. As we drag down it just simply completes the pattern. We were incrementing one number at a time. So let's go over here to column D and notice I have 2, 4. Well, guess what happens when we drag this down? 6, 8, 10, and so forth all the way down to 28. So it kept the pattern going. It incremented by 2. So that's a really cool feature in Excel. Uh, it's always good to keep that in mind when you're when you're entering sequ sequential numbers or a, a pattern of numbers that increment by a certain type. Uh, but Excel goes beyond just numbers. It can also work with a combination of of words and numbers. Uh, for example here with group 1. Uh, watch what happens when I drag down. Group 2 so I can drag down to here and it gives me eight groups just by simply grabbing the autofill bar or and dragging it down. Uh, here it can recognize the pattern. We start with week three, the next week is five. Okay, we're going to increase each, each week by two. So there you go, that's a quick way to uh, enter things like that. Now this is what's really cool. Excel also has some built-in custom list and these are objects that you use, use uh, very often in spreadsheets like the day of the week or the month. So I've typed in the word Sunday here. Watch what happens when I autofill down. It automatically plugs in the days of the week. Let's double click that to widen the column. And the same will work for January. As you guess, it plugs in all 12 months right there. So that's a real cool time saver. Uh, uh, called the autofill and again every cell has it uh, it's the black bar it's looking for the pattern and when you drag it down it simply just keeps the pattern going okay well let's uh, scroll down a little bit to the new portion of the website or the excuse me the screen <laughs> and uh, now I want to talk about absolute cell reference if you remember correctly in our previous tutorial uh, we had talked about relative cell reference as the default in Excel. Um, so I'll, real quickly, I just want to uh, create a, a simple spreadsheet here. I'm going to put an hourly wage of, say, $25. And uh, let's pretend that I want to see what my paycheck would be if I worked five hours. But I'd also like to see it if I worked 10 hours. So I could continue on entering numbers, but let's use our autofill that we just learned and let's continue this pattern all the way down to 40. That's a full week. So now we know how much I make an hour and we know that this is the number of hours per week I could potentially work. Now I need to determine what my, check pay my paycheck would be. Well, let's enter the formula. Uh, we'll say this equals and we'll go up here and click on B18 times cell A21 and press enter and that gives us our what our paycheck would be if we work five hours in a week. So you're saying okay that's pretty cool well let's uh, let's just copy this formula down to the next row and we should see and paste Wait a second, it's zero. Why is it zero? Well, it's because if you remember correctly, by default, Excel uses 
relative cell references. Basically what this formula in B21 is saying is, okay, I want to take the third row above me and I will multiply it times the cell immediately to my left. And we can see that by pressing the F2 key. It's saying I'm taking this cell in blue and I'm multiplying it times the green cell. So let's click on our for formula below and let's press the F2 key. Notice that we're now off. The, the columns uh, the, the columns okay, but our row is off by one. Why is that? Well, it's because we're using relative cell references. Um, again, this cell is saying I'm going to take the third row above me and multiply it to my cell immediately to my left. Well, 0 times 10 is 0, isn't it? So this is where we want to use a cell reference, or an absolute cell reference. And to do that, you use the F4 key. And again, I want to go down here and bring this up so you guys can see it. The, uh, the F4 key toggles absolute cell references. So uh, let's select our cell our formula that we need to change. Actually, I want to go back up here. Let's, uh, let's delete this row, this formula first because this is the one I really need to change. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's press F2. And now I want to highlight the cell that I need to make absolute. In other words, I don't want it to change when I copy my formula. So that cell is B18. So I'm going to highlight B18. And now I'm going to press the F4 key. Uh, and I want you to watch what happens. Uh, there's three different toggle settings. Uh, first one, and notice the, the, the dollar signs that get placed in there. Uh, again, you can press it again. That locks the row. And the third setting locks the column. And I'll explain what these mean here in a second. Uh, then you toggle it a fourth time and you return it back to where you were before. So here, what do I need to do? Well, I want to keep the row absolute. In other words, as I copy my formula down, I want this row to stay the same. So I need to lock my row. How do I do that? Well, I press the F4 key until I have the dollar sign beside the row. And there we go. That's basically saying I want row 18 to stay the same. So we'll press enter. And now watch what happens when we copy this cell. We can paste it here. And now our, f our formula is correct. If we select this column and press F2, notice we're on 25 and 10. I want to show you one more feature of autofill. Because we have a, a formula now that's good, we can copy it down. There's another way you can copy formulas by using the autofill. And that's just by grabbing the black dot and dragging it all the way down. And it automatically copies the formula in there. And again, because we're, we've made uh, row 18 absolute, our formulas are accurate. I can press the F2 key, and it always points to row 25. So again, I've, um, I'm almost out of time. We'll come back uh, uh, in our next tutorial, and we'll continue with our, our talk with absolute sales. Um, in the meantime, as your homework assignment, I would like you guys to figure out the formula for your paycheck over 40 hours. In other words, 45, 50, 55, and 60. I'd like for you to determine what your paycheck would be based on time and a half. Any All time over 40 hours is counted as time and a half. So try to figure out what that would be and we'll discuss that in our next tutorial. Alright, don't forget to, to subscribe to my channel and uh, we'll see you guys next time.